never seen a lame man walk Never heard a dumb man talk Never seen a blind man see I promise you a pain is made Never seen a cancer death Never seen all the poor get fed Never seen a prisoner set free I promise you a change is We were singing, and you don't know what we were singing. This is the Big C and Bigger T podcast, the podcast that brings you two overweight best friends from long, long ago, back in sixth grade, they first met, and they're still best friends in their mid-40s, somewhere in the mid-40s, we're swimming in the waters, somewhere in there. Carry the seven. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, 40s. (laughs) <laughs> we went to Greenbrier. We can't do math. Yeah. But anyway, we're here to talk sports and current events and movies and food and whatever else pops in these deranged brains of ours. We're glad you're here with us. I'm Big T, Bigger T, Travis Johnson. As always, I am joined by my man, the one that always has the plan. It's right here. Big C. Clint Clark, how you and, doing, homie? And I'm fan, fan, fantastic. You know what I mean? It's just what when's not a good day to be me. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's true. Every day I wake up above ground, contrary to waking up below ground. I guess if I had an underground house, waking up below ground that's, wouldn't be that bad. Uh, yeah. I was like, you know, if, you know, there'd been a storm, and I'd been in a storm shelter. In that case, waking up underground wouldn't be so bad. This episode brought to you by Propel. Not dude really. i love propel it's funny because you know when i was in vegas i'd got i'd got i'd got food poisoning it's technically it was traveler's diarrhea but food poisoning just sounds so much better did than you traveler's. say diarrhea on our podcast i did say diarrhea so i okay. had traveler's okay. diarrhea and i i've I'm, I'm going out of town next week we, we you talked about this and i'm like paranoid now about getting sick again like I'm like, I don't know. I've ever got sick. I've gotten sick eating Arby's. I can't eat Arby's. I maybe Subway. I don't. So I don't know. You see, I'm under a lot of pressure, under a lot of stress here. Pack that Imodium AD, baby. Just yep. always okay. pack it with you. Now let's bring, it, symptom stuff. Yeah, let's, bring, let's bring it back around to where I was. If you'd asked me before that trip to Vegas, I told you I didn't like Propel. Right. No, I love Propel. I get the little packets. I, I and yeah. And my wife's a hippie, so it's like it was a it was like winning a fight to be able to get these. I said, "Look, we're gonna save money because I'll just get the thing for in here. It's gonna be cheaper." That's how that's how I, that's how I backdoored my way into getting bottled water. But I love because I love Propel. It's it's phenomenal. What's your favorite flavor? Propel, the kiwi strawberry. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, they have the black cherry. I've not I've not seen it in yeah. the the big one, but they in the and the packets they have it, and it, it is it is just. I usually buy the multi pack from my local Walmart stores. Yeah, we'll take a sponsorship from y'all. Yeah, Walmart, anytime. y'all got the money. Yeah. Come on, come on. It has uh, it has grape, mixed berry, and kiwi strawberry. In yeah, multi pack. So that way I get a little variety, you know. And uh, hey, it's good. Uh, I get my electrolytes, whatever those are. Elect. It has the electrolytes. The plants. I hear they're good for you. Yeah. Sounds so. Rich. Now, when you now when you jump on here, do you have any? I mean, because like usually I have to open up, so I'm waiting on you to jump on. Do yeah. you have any pre, like any traditions? Like that pre-game you have, ritual? Any a pre a pre podcast ritual? No, besides going to the bathroom. Uh, no, I don't. I just uh, I'm usually kind of rushing to get in here. Um, get in here, get set up. Get all my stuff set up. Make sure I got something to drink in case I get in a coffin fit. Um, and that's about it. No, I don't. I don't have really. A, now you do. I, I, no, I, I do. I, now see. Now I wish I went to the bathroom before the podcast usually, because there's been one or two times I've I've been in the podcast like Travis. I've got to go. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, <laughs> I've got to pee so bad. Um, yeah. So no, I do. I always come in and I don't know why. I'm like, hey. 
Alexa, play Bodies by Drowning Pool. And then, you know, usually if it's, it's playing it. Alexa, stop. It didn't hear me. Alexa, stop. I don't want to get one of the notifications. This has been partially blocked because you don't have the rights to these music. Um, so I'll, I'll have it play. I'll play Bodies by Drowning Pool. Bodies hit the float. Just, you know, to get me pumped up. And then I segue from that, which this one makes no sense, but it's a fast, I mean, you're talking before the podcast. It's a fast paced song. I'll listen, I'll listen to We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel. I think that's a motivational song. I mean, it's a motivational song, but. You know, We Didn't Start the Fire. It's always burning. Right. The world's been turning. And I like them where, where people sing fast. And, you know, he sings really fast in that, in that song, in that song. But then I saw, as me and you're talking, I'm like, me and Travis both are fans of, of Saturday Night Live. You remember that Jared's Room sketch where he convinces his roommates that chicks like Billy Joe and mesh tank tops? <laughs> oh, I don't think I remember that one. <laughs> so, so well, when Chris Parnell comes out, I can't remember his name, but he's, you know, he's the roommate on Jared's Room. Yeah. And Jared's got um, Katie Holmes with him. And he goes, he goes out, he's wearing this skin tight mesh tank top. <laughs> Which, by the way, one time when I was a kid in Greenbrier Elementary School, I had a, a neon yellow mesh tank top. Mm. And you could see my nipple straight through that thing. And <laughs> it's okay, so Mama, Mama Sue sent me to school on that thing. And they're like, uh uh-uh, uh, you ain't wearing that. Cover. <laughs> Cover, cover them things up, boy. <laughs> like they're saying, I was. <laughs> We're gonna have to close this podcast down now because Clint has said diarrhea and nipple in the same. <laughs> but, but, but that's hilarious. <laughs> but you know, back then as kids, though, you know, like I used to wear those little cut off shirts. You know, right. you know, I'd wear those. My little chubby belly bouncing around everywhere. <laughs> my little white boy fro I had. You know, running around. Hey, I was cool. But, you know, I grew up missionary Baptist, so it wasn't like you could exactly tell Sue, like, no, I'm not going to wear this. I'll get in trouble. It's like she laid your clothes out and this one, put that on. Put yeah. that on. And that's like, okay, mama, don't hurt me no more. <laughs> um, that, that was how it was being raised by Sue. Like, hey, mama, don't right. <laughs> oh, so, so he walks up. So, anyway, I'm back on the, back on the skit at hand. I told you this one thing. I'm gonna get off chasing rabbits on this one. I did hadn't yeah. thought about being kicked out of school in that mesh tank top in a while, and yeah, uh, yeah. I'm happy <laughs> it just brought it. And even back then, even as a child, I did not have the figure to pull off a mesh tank top. Yeah, <laughs> just say it. <laughs> as well, you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, no one should ever pull that off. Yeah, Chris That's Parnell did though, because he walked up to Katie Holmes and goes, "Oh." You must be an uptown girl. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'll be, a lot of times I'll be just driving, we'll be like riding in the car and a Billy Joe song come on and look at my wife goes, Oh, you must be an uptown girl. <laughs> <laughs> but not in the mesh tank top though. Yeah. Well, um, just real quickly, you, you mentioned the song about drowning pool, let the body hit the floor. Uh-huh. If you've never watched it, just a fun watch on the internet is go to YouTube and look up Benny Hinn, uh, Let the Body Sit the Floor. You know, Benny Hinn's one of those preachers that, you know, like, just is out and people fall out. Well, they have that song going. And, like, there's times where he just throws his jacket and people, like, fall out and stuff. It's so stinking funny. So, anyway. I'll definitely. Check. The, we'd like to share that one on the Facebook page. Speaking of people getting laid out, laid out. Woo! Uh, how about the slap heard around the world <laughs> on the TV show that no one was watching? <laughs> like, <laughs> would you have known the Oscars was happening if it wasn't for Twitter last night? <laughs> you, it was crazy. As I, I didn't, by the way, how could that not be her holy schnikes moment of the week? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it just it did like everybody. People tune in like, oh, what, what, what's the whole? I don't know what the whole Schnackies moment was going to be. Let's see what my boy right. got to yeah. say. So, yeah, I rolled over in bed this morning. Anna was on the phone, goes, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars last night. And yeah. I'm like, what? I'm on the Twitter sphere. 
you know, so I, at first I had to Google it and yeah, it got him pretty good. Now I, I've seen a lot of, uh, Dutch man, dirty Dutch man tail. And the only reason you'll probably remember because he used to carry a bull whip to the ring. He broke down the yeah. picture. He thinks it's a work. He thinks they're working all it's of his it. fake. Yeah. He's like, look, he got it because Rock had his hand behind his back. He had he's leaning out with his chin exposed. And I just don't I think Will Smith finally like not he finally just snapped. Like, no, not anymore. Okay, so Clint, honestly, honest. You think it was real, real emotion, real his slap, really happened, or do you think it was a ploy to get people to actually watch a show and pay attention to something that no one was paying attention to. Man, I, it's, it's, I mean, cause you gotta think about Will Smith basically found out in, in, a, in a setting, like on a television show that his wife was in an, an entanglement, whatever that is. I, yeah. I don't know. And didn't lose his mind. Yeah. And then he, you know, and I get it, you know, he made a joke about a disability, I don't know, disability, a condition that your wife had. Well, it's, a it's a disease. It's a disease. Yeah, it's it's an autoimmune disease. Mm. And he made a joke about it. I, I think Will Smith just overreacted. I I, th- I I don't think it was work. I think he, he really, he really, he lost it. I think he, he had, he just, he, in that moment, he just lost it. And if, if you're st- here, I was back and forth. Okay. Um, Chris Rock's good on his feet as far as keeping going, talking, right? Chris Rock kind of was stuck on what to say. He did good keeping it going. Right, yeah. You know, after it. The other thing was, did you see Will Smith's accepted speech for the best actor? I did not. Google it or YouTube it. Um, I think it it was real. Yeah. I, I think I think I think he now not the best of reactions by Will Smith. Okay. Was it wasn't a wise reaction? Should have been a conversation had backstage, you know, should it should it not have happened, you know. Well, if I'm in charge of security at the Oscars, you know, or if I'm a person that's putting on the Oscars and I'm starting to worry about who's going to walk up on stage next, you know. Um, you know, of course, we've already had, you know, Kanye telling Taylor Swift <laughs> that Beyonce was the best at one time. But, uh, no, it, it's it was not a wise thing by Will Smith, but I think Will realized that, but I think it was real emotions from Will Smith. I'm telling you, watch that acceptance speech. Yeah, I will. I will. And you know, it, it's they 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 discussed afterwards. I guess they have like a twelve member body. And they they had discussed kicking Will Smith out, hmm. not disqualifying him from winning the award. He obviously earned it, but yeah. they they discussed him and they're talking about you know possibly banning him from future events. Yeah, um, which I I think if anything happens, maybe. Rock and Smith will work together on a project and it'll be a huge thing because everybody wants to see how them two do together. This bad blood could carry over. It just depends on them. Uh, that or they're going to announce the next celebrity boxing match between them two. <laughs> <laughs> who's, your, who's your money on if that happens? Muhammad Ali, baby. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, mean, I don't think it's much of a... I don't, I don't think it's a much Look, of a fight. Chris yeah. Rock's not much of a fighter. <laughs> I guarantee you. No, 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 no. Hey, uh, as skinny as he's been his whole life, <laughs> he's not one to stand. He's not a pugilist. Yeah, he 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 was in the longest yard and played the caretaker for a reason. Like, that's right. That's right. Yeah. We can't put him. Yeah. In. Okay, so Clint, final four is upon us, and the Razorbacks are not part of it. Boy, Last man. week we we made our predictions. We were worried about Gonzaga. I was worried about Gonzaga. I didn't know. I didn't think we could beat Gonzaga. I really didn't. I thought. I mean, I I hope we were going to beat Gonzaga. I knew we could beat Gonzaga, 
I was worried their big men were going to be too much for us. And Clint, they weren't too much for us. They weren't. Trey Wade had a game and a half playing defense on a over seven footer. He did a great job on Holmgren. He got some help, but he did a great job on him. Uh, Williams did a great job, and we beat the number one team. How many number one teams is that in the season we beat, Clint? That, that was two. And it is the first time that Arkansas had ever beat a number one seed, a number one seed ever. Ever. They ever. were 0 and 10 versus versus number one seeds before that. They'd never done it. And plus, and you put on top of that that we beat number one Auburn at Bud Walton first time. I think maybe been any team would beat the number one overall seed and the number one. I know definitely first time for an Arkansas team. Yeah. I mean, but, but they beat the number one overall team and the number one AP team in the same year. Yeah. I mean, wow. And then this, I mean, just to add to what we did this year, okay, or what the Hogs did this year, back-to-back Elite Eight runs, first time since 94-95, right? Yep. I mean, wow. Wow. Um, Oh, by the way, Travis, I'm not I, – I don't want to – because I don't know if you've seen this yet. I allow my swap one Google an episode. Yeah. Five-star Anthony Black has committed to Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. It's happening in real time, folks. We were – like, Yeah, I, it happened 11 minutes ago. We, 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 we were going to discuss this later in the show, but this is insane. A six – the one thing this this squad did not have, there's two things this squad did not have coming next year, was a big man, yeah, and a, and a and a true point guard. They got you know two great combo guards, yeah. But you got to think about that next year's starting lineup: Anthony Black at at point, Nick Smith, Nick Smith at shooting guard, Walsh at, at a forward. Hopefully, Jalen Williams at power forward. At the five, probably. Yeah, yeah, at the five. I mean, they'll probably play a three forward. It may play three guards. That's probably what you'll do. You'll see, like, Devo or, you know. But there, but all those guys, when your point guard's six, seven, six, eight, because that Anthony Black, well, you got – well, no, you still got Nick Smith. You got – Darian Ford. And here's the thing, Clint, Nick Smith has been the talk of all the practices at the McDonald's All-American game. Yeah, no, I like have his ranking. His ranking has gone up this week. Like, the, he's been the talk. He's been showing out at the McDonald's yeah. All-American practices. Okay. We got three McDonald's All-Americans coming in now with, with Black coming in. Not only that, Clint, I was poking around on – uh Hogsports.com. We are no way, incorpor- you know, connected to them. I'm just a member there, and I'm a fan of the Trey Biddy and Danny West and Curtis Wilkinson and the people that write there. Okay. Yeah, and one thing, I'm not, and I'm not, do, never give away paid content on there. Either. I'm not giving away any paid content, but if you are a paid member, there is a thread on that. I, I'm going to try to sell some memberships. Okay, <laughs> to them for them right now. If you're not a member, go there's a there is a thread right now of all the transfer portal people that are saying that Arkansas has contacted them. And it's a pretty long thread. <laughs> they hit Musselman when he said after the Duke game that he's about to get to work on next season. He is working on next season. He well, is already I, contacting the best players in the country that are looking to leave their school. Right. Now, I did read one of the guys, and this is out there, and if I'm not a paid member, so that means it's public. But one of the guys is a seven-foot center mm. that's in the portal they're talking about. That's yeah. more, more of a true center. They were talking on the buzz this morning about how 
go ahead and write it down. Connor Vanover is going to be a UCA Bear next year. So yeah, that's right. I mean, that's that, but that's going to happen. You know, if you're if you're, I mean, if you got, you're going to have to lose some of those guys. You know, if I'm KK Robinson, for example, and I love KK, you know, I think he's one of the guys that everybody's looked like. Why isn't this guy playing? Why isn't this guy playing? You know, you got to look at what's coming in next year if you're KK. And be like, all right, is there really going to be a spot for me? Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, you, there's just the reality of the situation. You know, Devo's going to be fine. I mean, Devo's going to play, but, you know. And I'll tell you another guy that I think Arkansas fans are going to love, and I think he's he's highly rated recruit, and any other year he would be one of our top recruit. But when you put three McDonald's All-Americans on the team, he's not quite as high. But Darian Ford from Magnolia down here in South yeah. Arkansas is going to be a great point guard for us, too. Another well, great Pinion. point guard. Pinion as well. Terrific, terrific spot-up shooter out of Marlton. That's right, yeah. I mean, and that's not even count Barry Dunning. I mean, I mean, and that, that's, six, that's six ESPN top 100 players that he has signed. That's right. Yeah. I mean, wow. And I know we didn't plan on talking this long about recruiting, but I just Googled that. I'm like, I got to tell you. I mean, because yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, that's what the, we just, that's what this podcast wanted to, we want it to be is two best friends talking about this. And, yeah. and trust me, if, if we hadn't been doing this live on here, we'd have been on, we'd have been calling each other, texting Marco Poland. Most well, we've, we've already got group texts from, from Wes and some of them. Yeah. Wes, Wes sent out a group text to all go about it. Anthony Black. So. I've got between me and you, I've got that one on mute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, don't worry, it's between me and you. No, yeah. This is uh, yep, no, there it is. Um, but you know what? But, but here's the thing I think now happens. And this wasn't that line's kind of out the window, but one of the things that I think got we were talking about at lunch today at work about this, about how now you have to feed that beast. Yeah. And that's what got Nolan was, you know, at the end of the day, you know, there was all the other lawsuit and all that stuff. You can say what you want to do. That the fans' expectation got built up and built up and built up and built up and built up. And, built up. and you got to keep feeding that beast. Now, Eric Muslim has won seven years in a row yeah. three at Arkansas, four at Nevada, has top 20, top 20, I mean, top 20 win seasons. Yeah. So now you're going in next year. You have three McDonald's All American. You have hopefully Jalen Williams coming back. Um, that to me, that's what that's the main thing the season hinges upon. Is does Jalen Williams come back? I, I think you, I think they're a Final Four, a, a potential Final Four team without him. They're the number one team in the country, in my opinion, with him. Yeah, and that's plus you throw in Devo Davis. Yeah. You throw in – I mean, you know, you're, we've already talked about all these freshmen. You, you throw in Tony may come back. Yeah. I mean, you got you to gotta shut down a guy like him as a possibility maybe. I mean, he may not with, with all these other guys that are similar size and similar ability. You know, we may not see him. But, I mean, you <laughs> – and with all these other transfer possibilities, you know, there's there's no telling what the, this team will look new. Now, here's the thing, Clint. Here's the thing. We got to remember, okay? We got to remember this next year as we're doing this podcast. Lord willing, the creek don't rise we're, as we're doing this podcast next year and as we're talking about this this basketball team. They're not going to look great at the beginning. No, they're not. They're going to be just figured. like they didn't this year, just like they did in the past two years. There's going to be games that we lose that we never should have lost, like a Hofstra or a Vandy. That will happen. It happens to Kentucky when they bring in, you know, five awesome freshmen or whatever, that because they're going to have to gel as a team. But wait till they get tournament time. If the talent on this year's team, Clint, think about it. If the talent he had on this year's team can go down to where most people think they just got beat by the national champions, right? 
A lot of people think that Duke was going to end up the way Duke's playing right now. If they keep playing that way, that they'll end up being the national champion. Oh yeah, no, I think if I if I just from what I've watched is I would pick I would pick Duke. Okay, so the team to take the talent he had these the last two years to get beat by possibly the eventual national champion of last year Baylor, this year Duke, and to play them you know decently well. You throw in three McDonald's All Americans into that mix. You throw in six top 100 ESPN players. Plus, you add some transfer puzzle pieces. Clint, <laughs> we're going to see what Musselman can really do. Yeah. If he oh, can't do it with what he gets on the court next year, then. I mean, there's just another team got really hot one night and we got really cold. This has the potential to be the best team Arkansas's ever had. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's just there's just no other – there's no The other potential way. is through the roof. Now, we may get – you know, we, we may get grounded. We may get reality check, you know, when it comes to playing next year. Okay? There may be some other teams that have some great players that come in and they gel more as a team or whatever, but – I'm excited, Clint. I mean, I'm excited. I was excited for this year, and now I'm already excited for. Let's start basketball up. Let's just yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, run it back, boys. Can't wait to get them boys. Can't wait to get them boys on campus. It's going to be. It's it's going to be it's going to be a sight to behold, and it yeah. But like you said, you know, I think if we'd looked at the beginning of the year, this Duke team would have been like, yeah, because they were a lot of underclassmen. But you see, you know, and then Arkansas, you had a senior leading team, but you see at some point talent's going to overcome experience. Yeah. The guy's just better. Yeah. If experience admit as much of talent, the Fab Five wouldn't have been a thing. Yeah. Um, you know, that that's the reason. And remember the Fab Five lost a lot. They, they did. They struggled. They, they didn't live up to their total potential is what and a lot of people thought. You know, of course, they were one of the first to do it like that, you know. So anyway, um, yeah, Clint, I, I, you know, but as far as this year's run, 28 wins, you know. That that was the most, I believe, they said since 95. Yeah. If I, if I read that correctly. What a year. And, and we lost the Hofstra and Vandy. You know, we lost the Hofstra and Vandy and – Still got 28. Yeah. That's a good year. No, you know, we started SEC play 0-3. I mean, we had people jumping off the must bus left and right. Yeah. Um, I think your co-host is one of them. Yeah, you did jump off. I jumped off. I was done. I was I was done with them. I was like, I'm done watching them. They figured it out. And then Musselman had shoulder surgery, and everybody was like, Well, not everybody. Me, I was like, Well, he's just doing that because he's giving up on them. Then they won, and then he's like, I can't take another game off. Like he's yeah. supposed to miss three games, and he missed one. Yeah. But I think that right. I think it's that point. I think if they had it bought into Eric, what Eric Musselman was selling. Yeah. When when you're well, I think, you know, I don't think people I don't think it, that gets put in pro proper perspective for the turning point. Because people are like, well, they're already turning around because like because of smart. You know, because whatever, he's smart, did a good game. They won at LSU, whatever. But then Musselman comes back that next game, not supposed to be back. Yeah. Comes back, coaches with a shoulder and sling. If that doesn't, you know, if that doesn't get you buy in. Yeah. Like, this guy, my coach is supposed to miss another week. Like, no, he, he's back early. He's coming back for us. That, that, that definitely, I think after that, at that moment right there, that team bought 100% into what he was selling. And you could tell a difference. Yeah. Well, and it was, you know, and I was sitting back, Clint, and, you know, me and you, you know, we had it on here on our podcast, but it was more than just here. I was listening to Sports Talk Radio locally and listening to just friends of mine as we talk, you know. You know, I felt like I was on, I was sitting on the bus bus, sipping on my icy, the nerdy kid that doesn't sit to the back, I'm sitting toward the front by the bus driver, okay, just 
holding seats for everybody to get back on sometime. And I was, and I was just saying, look out, this team will have a chance to make the NCAA tournament was what I was saying. And I was more yeah. positive than anybody I knew <laughs> because no one, everyone else was like, yeah, they're done. They're not going to make the tournament. Because you, well, you know, last year they they would they were winning those those mm-hmm. Southeast Louisiana games and UCA games, and they were beating the brakes off those teams. This year's like, okay, you're winning by six or seven, and then you go to you go you win that tournament in Kansas City, which you played Cincinnati and uh, Kansas State. Yeah, which you know. Okay, they're major programs, but they're not exactly, you know, going at the to, time though. That seemed like a good because those were it, it, it did. Those, those, were, those were good wins, but but you know, you so you had those glimpses like hey, this team could do that, and then you go to Tulsa where you should have a pro Arkansas crowd, and uh, Oklahoma just beat us like we owed them money. I mean, it, I mean it, that was. That was a good old fashioned beatdown. Yeah, and uh, you know you feel good for Porter Mosier. By the way, do you think it was a mistake for Porter Mosier to leave Loyola Chicago for uh, for Oklahoma? No, I, mean, I get the upside's better at Oklahoma. See, but I think it, it, we're talking about this is at work too. Is that I think. He could have. He he had Loyola Chicago on the point where they were, they were where Gonzaga was ten years ago. Yeah. So I'm like, he. I mean, because you got to think about that. I mean, he, he could probably not leave the city of Chicago and recruit a good basketball team every year, and then just cherry pick one sure. or two from the portal. And you know, yeah. No, I, you're I, right. I, I think there's, there's I think something with, to stay in. You know. I think with where he was at Loyola Chicago, he could have had that as a better in, in about five years, he could have it further along than he'll have Oklahoma in five years. No, I don't blame him for taking the money. I mean, don't get me wrong. Take the money. All the thing is, though, if you're going to make a money grab, that was the time to make it. If you were going to go to a school that's going to get you a max contract in NCAA Division One basketball, that was the time to do it. He had proven himself at Loyola. You know, he, he it was it was the time. If you're gonna set your family up for for good, that that was the time to do it. So, do you remember I, I when Little Rock? Him. Huh? Do you remember when he was at Little Rock? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what he he went from there to like Illinois State, and then you know after that he served some time, I believe, under um oh who was that um. He went to St. Louis. Wasn't he under Rick Majerus for a little while? Was he? I think he may have been. Yeah, I think he was a Rick Majerus disciple. And, you know, yeah. and if there's ever a coach that kept it real, it was Rick Majerus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was, they got him under attack. Yeah. Hey, um, all right. So the final four. Man, this is a blue blood final four. All four I know, teams are blue. I know blue neither blood. of us had this <laughs> had this final four in our brackets. I had two of them. You did, man. You did better than me. I had Villanova and I had Kansas. Okay, so who who do you think wins it all? All right, now on one. Okay, you let, let's talk Villanova versus Kansas first. Okay. I don't really care. I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> watched, I've watched, I haven't watched a lot of either one of them. Um, Bill Self's obviously a legendary coach. Jay Wright's won two national championships there at Villanova, I believe. Um, Jay Wright, yeah. Yep. I, but I think Kansas is the number one seed for a reason, and I see I see Kansas pulling it out. I, they just looked a little bit better to Villanova to me, than Villanova to me. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Well, I think Jay Wright is, and this is a big statement, a huge statement. It's a huge statement. I probably don't believe it. Go ahead I heard and say someone it. else say it today, and I, and I, and I may agree with him. 
possible. Jay Wright may be the best coach left in the Final Four. Okay, no, I don't believe it. Now think about it, Clint. He's won two national championships. Yeah. Has he done it with the type of players that Shusevsky automatically gets a you, you got You got a point. Or that Self automatically gets at Kansas. Or what they get at North Carolina. I mean, Hubert Davis. Yeah. Is... He's done it in little old Villanova. Okay. Which is, is uh, Loyola. Yeah. Okay. Is Loyola from a few years ago. Um, Jay Wright's a good basketball coach. He is a very now, good. I mean, no, I really agree with best. you that Kansas is the more talented team. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think it. I think it, there's a good chance it'll end up being Kansas. Now on the other side, so I, I, say, am, I am going to say Duke gets its revenge. Well, the, but here's the thing: could it been set up better? I mean, yeah. I mean, really. You have somehow you by some miracle like you don't get that taste of revenge. So here's the thing: there's a chance North North Carolina can do their favorite. There is nothing, and I lived out on Tobacco Road in a little for a little while in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I loved going to bars, and I don't like going to bars at all. But I love going to bars and watching a Duke North Carolina game because I don't have a vested interest in either one of them. Yeah. I just want to watch them hate each other. And it's yeah. fun. It's delightful to me. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Because that's the type of psychopath your co-host is. Yeah. <laughs> but but the North Carolina fans, like, like they can say we ended Coach K's career for the rest of their lives. Yeah. They can be the team to end Coach K's career. Yeah. And then and then Coach K could have. And then Coach K could go to the grave with the brag around saying, I sit in North Carolina home in my last Final Four. You know, Clint, I I, I see that too. I mean, I, mean I, I, I see what you're talking about from the North Carolina side. But I think, you know, there's something I, I heard Coach K interviewed, and there's something he changed. He's letting this team just play. He's not, you know, he's not like he said at halftime what he started doing. Normally he would go in, kind of preach to him, and then let his assistants, you know, sit down with him and stuff. Yeah. He said now he's going in at halftime. He pulls up a chair and they sit and discuss the first half. And he get, hears from his players on what's working, what's not working, what they think they need to change. And then he talks to his assistants, and then they work with the players, okay? Coach K, in his last season, is proven that he – why he's such a great coach. And he's – these players are wanting to win for him, okay? And I think they want to pay North Carolina back for that loss at home, to, for taking Coach K's loss that night. And that ticked Coach K off, and I think um, I don't know. I I think Duke. I, so what's Carolina an eight seed? Uh, yeah, eight seed. They're, they're an eight seed, so yeah. they had to go through. I mean, now granted, they didn't have. I mean, their path they had to be. Who was their number one? They beat was it Arizona? Baylor. Baylor. Okay. So they had to they so they had to beat Baylor and then on paper they had they would have to go through Baylor and Kentucky to get to the final four. And obviously it didn't work out because <laughs> Kentucky they lost beat. the state beat. The Peacocks. It'll yeah, never man. not be funny. It'll never not be funny. <laughs> it's just yeah. Hey, did you know that St. Peter's has the same amount of Elite Eights as Auburn since 1986? The more you know, kids. <laughs> the more, you, the yeah, more right. you know. Right. Um, yeah. So, but I was saying they 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 when they they didn't see this when they drew out the tournament. Yeah. They did. They they just they. There's no way you could have wrote this. No. So I mean, it is a fun. It's just a fun. I mean, we're, we're a couple of boys from Arkansas, and I happen to live out in North Carolina for a minute. But even from that. 
this is a great story, even if I've yeah. never lived there. It's it's a great yeah. story that I don't think you could write. I, no. I think you said this is the way. If you would have picked this in your bracket for him, people would have laughed at you. Oh yeah, yeah. Now Villanova, Kansas, Duke, get in there. Yes, you could. But North Carolina, get in there. I mean, they basically they had to they had to take Cinderella out back and punch her in the eye to get there. But that's all right. I mean, because they 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 did uh, St. Peter's pretty good, and their coach is already gone too. Did you see right. that? That's right. Seton Hall. Seton Hall. So who's your champion? Duke. I think I think Duke's just the team of destiny. I think they're just. I, I think it's just. Now, Nick Smith and Jordan Washington, they're watching the game like, man, they ain't going to let Duke lose. I, I don't I don't believe it was the referees. I think Duke yeah. – Mark Williams is the best player I've seen this year. Yeah. I mean, he he really, to me, that was the difference in the game was Mark Williams is the best player in the country. Yeah. I don't know how high he's going to be drafted, but I would take him over I, – I would take him over anybody I saw this season. I, I think – I think Duke beats North. I think Duke beats North Carolina, and then Duke beats Kansas, and Coach K goes out with the championship. That I think that's the script that everyone wants to write. Um, now that being said, me and you both sit here on this podcast and pick Gonzaga to win it all like a week ago. So yeah. So, so don't so, don't 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 take our advice and go gamble. Yeah, don't bet your money on what we said, folks, because. That's a guaranteed wrong answer. Um, all right. Well, Clint, let's talk about a couple of other sports real quick before we go. We don't we don't have a lot of time here, but uh, you know, something happened before spring break that we didn't really talk about, and that is uh, football spring practice. And, uh, you know that? Did you know that happened? I did know that, but I think it's. It's so much quieter this year because you have, you know, a lot of the la – last year when everybody worries about spring practice because the, the, there was one position up for grabs last year that everybody cares about. Yeah. Who's going to be QB1? Who's going to be QB1? Yeah. Who's gonna, I mean, that's, that's, that's the only time anybody really pays attention to what's going on in spring ball is when yeah. QB is. There, like we are talking about on the podcast, there, there's one position on offense up for grabs. One, you know who the you basically know who the tight ends are. You know who four of the offensive linemen are. You know who the quarterback is. You know the linebackers. You have a five star recruit that's going to come in to replace your first round draft pick. So you kind of know the wideout rotate. Well, I mean, there's going to be some turnover at wideout. Uh, that that's going to yeah. be. So by the way, um, uh, they said that uh, Pittman was at first he was worried about Jordan Hazelwood. Or Jaden Hazelwood, whatever it was, Hazelwood, the transfer from Oklahoma. Right. They said uh, he was worried about him because he's like, man, he doesn't, doesn't seem like he's running hard. You know, he's not, you know, but then he started watching the film of him and he realized he's just a, he's kind of like a Matt Jones, he's a long strider. Yeah. So he just, uh, apparently the way he runs, it doesn't look like he's, it doesn't look like he's trying real hard, but whenever he's running away from people. When he's when he's on film, you know, so um, he should be interesting to watch for sure. But you're right. I mean, the big you know the big thing is left tackle. You know, they're moving some folks around, uh, trying to figure that out. They have some uh, they have some guys that have come in that they're trying trying out at that position. Uh, one of the big questions is going to be on defense. Uh, you know, who's going to fill those slots for those? Um, Linebackers, those you know the the Grant Morgan and Hayden Henry, you know who's who's gonna you know who's gonna fill that, uh, you know because that that's gonna be huge for them. Yeah. Uh, um, that's two hundred plus tackles you've lost. You know. That, oh yeah. I mean, you got. I mean, that bumper coming back is huge because that's at least I think that's your. I think he he basically takes over for Grant as the unquestioned leader of that defense. For sure. Well, you got cattle on there too, handles the back end, but then you got, you know, bumper up front. So, you know, that, that, and then a lot of, I mean, you basically, you lost your entire de defensive line, but it it's not going to get, 
it, it doesn't get as publicized as you know when you lose a quarterback. Yeah, and and that's yeah, and that's why I think we'll be fine. But yeah, there's just not a lot of intrigue. I mean, there, I mean, it's going on. And it's big, and and it's so important, you know. Because you talk about these guys that are battling for, I mean, you got what, Luke Jones, uh, Crawford, St. John, and I think the, they got a couple of freshmen they like out there too that left tackle. So you got, I mean, just guys yeah. that are just, they're going out there every day giving it their all to, to get to win that position. It's just as important as the quarterback position. Um, so, I mean, for some, for some of these kids, it is a huge spring. Why, why? Us as fans sit around like, oh well, we know we got KJ back. Who cares about spring ball? Yeah. Jalen St. John, Crawford, Luke Jones, all them guys, Chambly, the uh, Marion Harris, all them guys that could be your starting left tackle. They all care. Yeah. Uh just real quick, I, I was gonna look here at the list of the uh, some of the linebackers we do have. These are some names we're not used to, okay? So I wanted to. I want to kind of say some of these. Um, got Drew Sanders. That's the transfer from Bama, right? Yeah, 6'5", 232. He's ever – Four and five. Four, former five-star recruit? Yeah, former five-star. Uh, Keelan Burrell, uh, redshirt sophomore. Uh, Christopher Paul, Jr., redshirt freshman. And everything I hear is that they love this kid. Six one two thirty two. He's got the size, you know. That's, you know, you got to think that's SEC size right there. You, I mean, you know, when and when a player like Andrew Parker transfers, who's been in the program for a few years, yeah, when it looks like he's on the cusp of playing time, that tells you that, you know. And I'm and Andrew Parker's probably a heck of a ball player. I don't want to sound like I'm bad mouthing the kid, but I'll just call it boy. When he transfers like that, that says that he sees himself falling behind on the depth chart a little bit to that yeah. guy. In my personal opinion. Another one, uh, Marco Avant, 6'3", 221. Caden Henley, 6'2", uh, 222. Uh, Avant's a redshirt freshman, so he's been there a year. Uh, Jordan Crook, 6'2", 227. Manny Powell, 6'3", 220. You know, Clint, a few years ago, if we were looking at these, uh, this roster, you know, we we would have been looking at guys in the round two hundred. Yeah, five eleven, two hundred five. Yeah, yeah. And so the fact that these guys are already so many of them have fr next to their name, or either redshirt freshman or freshman, and they're already up in the two twenties, two thirties. That tells me we're in, we're in a we're we're got SEC size there. Yeah. Now, do we have SEC speed? These guys are supposed to be athletic, also, so that's what we got to hope for. That we put out, we put out some some guys with speed, so that we can, well, because that's where we've been hurting in the past. I mean, honestly, well, as good as Grant and Hayden and Bumper had been in there, as far as making tackles, they've hurt us with their feet. Yeah. No, Chad Morris did get one thing right, and then the, yeah. he didn't get a lot. Well, he got some recruiting things right. Because yeah. some of these were because like KJ Jefferson's a Chad Morris recruit, which still blows my mind. Yeah. But Chad Morris always said you either got speed or you're chasing speed. That's right. And, and that's the thing. Is the, the speed of the game in the SEC is at a is at a different level. Yeah. So yeah. And uh, you know, recruiting is still looking good for the hogs. No, you know, it, it's not. We're not hearing as much about recruiting for the football team like we are the basketball team because we're not recruiting. We're not going after big-name quarterbacks right now or big-name running backs, okay? Um, now, I will tell you, uh, by the way, um, uh, Trey Biddy, this was on his free YouTube podcast deal, said that he's really been impressed with the way these guys look, a lot of these freshmen and everything, and the transfers that have come in. But he said he was really impressed with uh, Joiner, the kid from Little Rock, um, North Little Rock, the running back. Yeah. Um, he said he is similar in size to Rocket Sanders. Oh, wow. He's a good size running back like him. So 
that's a good thing too. That's another. He may be adding more depth at the running back position for us. Honestly, I think I think Sam Pittman knows what he wants better than oh, any yeah. coach there is. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not just – I mean, he can look at that like, okay, this is the type of player I need. He, yeah. I don't think he's – I don't think he's just chasing stars. No. I mean, he, he don't care if he's a two-star. If he thinks he looks at you and thinks that you can help him win. Hey, did you see him light the hog up? Yeah, man. He's got a new uh, – He's got a new statue on his property at, on Lake Hamilton. And, uh, I think what he's going to do, I think he planned on right lighting it red after big after big Razorback wins. Yeah, he's like, and he's like, I was going to save this football season, but I just couldn't help it and yeah. lit it up after the Gonzaga game. Which the bromance between Pittman and Musselman it is something something yeah. special. No, it's great the way those coaches get along. And one more thing about Mosman is you I hear him, I see him like everybody loves it. Like I remember like the New Jersey Institute of Technology baseball team was tweeting out like support of Musselman. Yeah. Because they loved hanging out with him for the, for the baseball. Year, yeah. So um yeah. and I was listening to ESPN national national talk show, and they're talking Razorback basketball again now. Yeah. They're talking about like oh, Musselman's got this where he wants it. And it, it's just – it's fun to have Arkansas basketball back where it belongs, and that's your national prominence. Yeah. Well, Clint, you know, it's uh, – <clears throat> it's good to be a hog right now. It is. Baseball's it's good winning. good to be a hog fan. Baseball's winning. Basketball, look, we wish we were at the Final Four, but we ex they exceeded our expectations this year. Football – Expectations were exceeded. Uh, we Pittman is doing a great job, continues to do a great job. It sure makes it easy for guys like us to go on here and talking about this stuff. Doesn't it? The only person that's gone negative was me. I got off the must bus for a minute. But. That's right, yeah. But we straightened you out. We got you back on it. and uh, Got me a seatbelt seat. I was that's excited. right. You're seat, your seat belted up. And uh, – you're not even in the way, way back seat. You're you're right there next to me, nerding out behind the driver. <laughs> Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> well, Clint, man. Next year, going to be awesome. Can't wait. We got more to talk about, though. We, we, we'll hit on some other stuff next week. Uh, we may uh, – Clint, I, I may need some counseling. Uh, my, my brown signed to Sean Watson. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to, I don't know what to do, Clint. There, there's a I've heard there's a lot of people not very happy about it. Um, well, I don't know how to feel. Yeah, if they hadn't given him the biggest contract ever in the history, guaranteed. Say what? Like, but it's the same thing that happened with Randy Gregory. Is basically the, he's like, I'm not going to Cleveland. Cleveland, you out. And yeah. then they're like, Hey, we'll guarantee you all this money. It don't matter if they suspend you. He's like. I've always considered Cleveland my home away yeah. from home. I always want to go to Cleveland. I, like love, Cleveland. I love the cold. What you yeah, talking about? Like, in the snow. I'm going <laughs> to put the eye in Ohio. Cleveland rocks. Come on, <laughs> Drew Carey. Give me some of them glasses. Like, I'll start in, I'll start in a Drew Carey show reboot. I don't care. Man, sometimes it's tough to be a Browns fan, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's tough. Oh, well. He's a talented guy. He may go out and do awesome, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, you know. I, I, well, hey, I man. reserve my comments. I've had more time to think them through on this podcast. That's true. Yeah. Well, Clint, man, as always, it's been great, folks. Uh, like, follow us, uh, share us, all that good stuff. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your auntie Boo Boo and them to listen, have a listen, because they might learn something. They might be entertained. They might get a laugh. They might get a cry. Whatever it is, we appreciate you listening to us. We appreciate you spending time with us. Those of y'all that download, those of y'all that listen to us each week, uh, we cannot tell you how grateful we are. Uh, we are. You can find us anywhere just about that you find podcasts. Okay, so we're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Amazon, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, FarmersOnly.com. 
I always throw in a dating site in case you ladies are interested in big T That's money. Right. He's single, ladies. Check us out on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook. We don't have a TikTok. We probably need to figure out TikTok. Don't we? I don't TikTok. I have a TikTok, but I don't know how to TikTok. I don't know. No, somebody like sent me like a TikTok thing the other day on Facebook Messenger, and I just responded, no. <laughs> no. All right. Well, Clint, man, as always, appreciate you. Love you, brother. And, uh, you. man, have an awesome week. And you folks out there in Internet world, be great. Ta-ta. Yeah. Sweat. One, filthy, dirt, harvest, hurt, kingdom come. When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more than I hurt Cry in your kingdom come Listen I wake up in the morning I bow my head to pray Mama told me if I don't Ain't nothing gonna change These prayers breaking up hard ground So I can sow the seed Get afraid of no aches and pain Lord knows I gotta follow his lead That's why I swear When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more Till I hurt, cry in your kingdom come Oh, I swear When I work, my hands get filthy